Hello YouTube and happy Monday to you. It's uh, October, what is it, October the 4th? So we're, we're squarely into uh, the fall and uh, it's great to be here. So thanks for tuning into the channel. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for those who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, do it. That'd be great. Um, that way you get notified when new videos come up and uh, it helps me to build the channel. So thanks and I appreciate all the interactions too. Jump into the comments and tell me what you think. Um, today I want to talk about saying I'm sorry in, in marriage and <clears throat> in the home and just how massively important that one thing is. It's maybe the most important thing in marriage um, for a, a couple, especially if you're a new, if a, you're a new couple, if you're an old couple, that hasn't figured this out, um, this is the thing. This is probably the biggest thing. Um, and if you go to my church, uh, you've probably heard me talk about this a bunch uh, before, but for the rest of you out there on the internets, um, just wanna talk about this a little bit. Um, there's this concept, and I'm, this is a, like 99% stolen from, um, from Pastor Doug Wilson up in Moscow, um, Idaho, but but they talk about this concept of staying, remaining in fellowship, <clears throat> living in fellowship with one another. And it's this idea that that um, that we don't have beef, right? We don't have beef between us and we don't let um, these kind of grievances go unaddressed for any period of time. Scripture talks about not letting the sun set on your anger, um, talks about keeping short accounts. And, um, and this is the thing, guys, this is the thing in, in relationships that really, that really becomes toxic and poisonous is when people keep a record of wrongs of another person and let it stew, let it fester. And it's just toxic. It really is. Um, and it's something uh, that your spouse doesn't need to work on. It's something you need to work on. Um, and this is, this is the this is just the trickiness of, of our sinful hearts is we always want to think about and focus on the sins and the mistakes of the other person. And we never really want to show them the kind of grace that we show ourselves. Um, I think about the Lord's prayer and forgive us our debts as we forgive others. You know, it's, it's your, it's basically a, a challenge to God. Why don't you be as, forgiving to me God as I am to other people yikes okay maybe I don't want God to forgive me the way that I forgive others um, right um, so so just tips you know to think about in the home um, in no particular order I'm just kind of riffing here but but um, but one is is lead uh, men you know lead lead in this teach this um, I I uh, I don't think my wife will mind me sharing that this was something that was really hard for her. It was not something she grew up with. She didn't grow up in a home where people said, I'm sorry to each other often. Um, and, and, uh, and so I, you know, as a young husband found myself feeling like, gosh, you know, I've said sorry and I'm apologizing and she, and she, you know, she really needs to apologize. And, and I really let it get under my skin at times. Um, but um, I just had Pastor Wilson smack me upside the head enough times um, in sermons um, in, in Moscow that, that I just kind of got it beat into my head that, that she's going to follow my lead, that I get to set the tone and the pace and the, and the attitude of our home, that I, I at least ought to be doing that, um, and that I'm leading, um, that I'm speaking, that I'm uh, preaching. I don't have the option of not preaching and speaking and leading. Um, as the father, God is the father. Um, and he, he chose that name for himself. Um, and then he gave that name to men, um, because he, uh, intends for us to know something about himself, about his character. Um, he, he's revealed something about his character in the character of men leading in their homes and being fathers. And so um, it's not a question of whether you are preaching uh, the gospel and preaching about God um, all the time. As a father, you you are. It's whether you're doing a good job or not, right? Whether you're teaching the truth about who God is or not. So um, so just lead. You know, that's the first thing I'd say to men is lead in repentance. Um, 
And, and scripture talks about this all the time, about taking the speck out of your own eye before uh, attempting to, excuse me, take the log out of your own eye before attempting to remove the speck from someone else's eye. Um, this is something we need to hear over and over and over. It's just, you know, I, I've counseled a lot of men who are like, well, I didn't do anything wrong. It's her that did something wrong. And I'm like, really? Do you really think there's nothing that you've done wrong here? Do you think you've handled this situation well? Do you think you've been patient? Do you think you've been gracious? Do you think... Uh, you did anything here that might have might have been sinful, right? It's like it doesn't take a whole lot of time usually. Uh, enough of those kinds of questions for you realize, like, yeah, there's some things in the situation that I could have done better. There are things here that I that I've failed at. And then the next the next application is um, important point about about asking forgiveness, apologizing is is there can't be a but there can and there can't be a an asterisk, you know. Um, and I, you see this all the time. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, or I'm sorry, I, uh, you know, I, 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 I felt, I felt like you were doing this. I'm sorry, but you know, if, if, if this hadn't happened then, or, or I'm sorry because I was feeling this way that it's just our sinful nature to say, sorry, but not sorry, you know, sorry, you feel that way. You hear that one, right? Sorry, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry that my words made you feel that way. And <clears throat> it's just not true repentance. That's not an apology. That is, uh, that's more, that's more blame shifting. That's more excuse making. An apology sounds like, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. I was trying to hurt your feelings. I said something mean. I said something rude. I knew it would get under your skin. I knew it would make you feel stupid. I knew it would hurt your feelings, and I said it anyway. I was trying to hurt your feelings. I'm sorry about that. Will you forgive me? That was wrong. That's that's an apology. Um, that's a real apology. Um, it's not a it's not um, it's not a fake apology, right? I'm sorry. I was drunk. You know that's common in our in our in our the world the, the world we live in today. It's like well, you you get drunk and you get a free pass to so do whatever you want, and then later you can just say sorry. I was drunk. And it's like yeah, that doesn't work. You know. Uh, when you're, when you drunk, when you drink, I, I feel like your heart is really exposed and you end up doing more of what, what you really want to be doing. Um, so, so it's like, I'm sorry, I was doing what I really meant to do. <laughs> so I was doing what I really want to do. Um, when God, when I see, when godly people, uh, use alcohol, usually what comes out is more joy, more, more, um, godliness, more love for the brethren. Um, of course they don't get drunk because they're, they're Christians and that's not something Christians do. Anyway, or at least they're not supposed to, obviously. Um, so what else do I want to say about about apologizing? Um, you know, obviously with kids, it's really important with kids too, right? Um, teach your kids what it looks like to, to eat crow and say, I'm sorry. Um, oh, this is, this is one of Pastor Wilson's just key takeaways every time he talks about repentance is um, you need to apologize privately for private sin. And you need to apologize personally for personal sin. And you need to apologize publicly for public sin. So there are times where what you've done, where you've sinned privately and um, it's between you and God or something in your heart or whatever. And and that's appropriate for you to apologize, to, to confess that sin to God. Um, you always need to confess it to God. God sees everything. So every, th- every sin needs to be confessed to God. But there are times where, um, you know, you sin against your wife. Let's say you get angry with her. Um, but it's it's after the kids went to bed, it's behind closed doors. You need to go wake up the family and say, hey, everybody, I want to apologize for this. You didn't, you know, they didn't see the sin. They weren't involved in it. You didn't sin against them necessarily. Um, so so the sin the sin was was a sin against your wife. You need to apologize to her. But, you know, when, when, uh, when, when you're sitting at the dinner table and you lose your temper at, at somebody, um, then... Uh, then you need to in front of all the people that saw it, you know, even if dinner's over, everyone walked away, you need to get the family back together uh, and and say, Hey guys, I, you know, I I didn't want to go any longer without confessing that that was wrong. I lost my temper. I was being mean. Um, and there's no excuse for it. Will you guys forgive me and, and ask for forgiveness. Um, so anyway, um, parents, one of the things that that's been a blessing for me, um, in, training my kids is when, when our kids are disciplined, when we're disciplining our kids, it's, it's all about doing it in the context of, um, teaching them to take responsibility and ownership of their sin. Right. And so, 
you know, we'll sit down and, and this is, you know, we're getting into a whole other video about discipline. So I won't, I won't, I won't go down too many, ra- try not to go down to this rabbit trail too far, but, but with your kids, um, you as a parent need to obviously be disciplining for an actual sin and not disciplining because they've upset you or inconvenienced you or embarrassed you. So there needs to be a Bible verse for whatever it is that you're, that you're, um, disciplining for a second, um, you need to be under control. So if, uh, if, if you're, um, disciplining a child, um, and you're doing it with a heart full of rage and anger, then you need a spanking, right? You need, you need discipline from God. And, um, and one of the things, one of the great things about repentance in the home, especially from parents is you're teaching your kids that I'm not, I'm not the ultimate final authority here. I'm under authority as well. There is, there are authorities over me, my boss, my government, my God, um, over all of that, um, that I'm accountable to and that I have to obey right away, all the way cheerfully with a good attitude. Right. And so, um, and so by, by repenting, um, and I promise you, if you're, if you're a human being, you have sinned in front of your kids, you've sinned with your kids and there, you have opportunities to, to confess that, um, you're teaching your kids, um, that you're not expecting anything more from them than, than you expect, um, uh, in yourself and, and from your spouse. So the other thing I was going to say is, um, is one thing that's been a real blessing for us is, is getting our kids as, as early as they can to apologize themselves. Um, and, and even when we pray, you know, we pray for forgiveness, um, to have them pray. Um, and so sometimes it's when they're really young, it's me saying, repeat after me, dear Lord, dear Lord. Um, I'm sorry for losing my temper. I'm sorry for losing my temper. Uh, I, I, when I smacked Susie with the toy, I was, um, I was being angry and that was sinful. Please forgive me. Amen. Right. And they repeat the prayer. And as, as they get older, they're able to, to pray those prayers themselves. And, and I can just tell you as a dad, that moment where the kid is actually with their own words, confessing what they've done, honestly, is, is more often than not the moment where I, I see their heart actually break over their sin, where I see it kind of land home, like actually naming the thing truly, you know, naming it in truth for what it really is, is that moment where it just kind of the truth lands. It's like, that was there, that was in my heart and I was doing that. And, and, um, so don't, don't skip that step, you know, don't, don't, um, rush in there, discipline your kid, and then wrap it up and run back out and skip over the, the opportunity to have them verbally confess their sin. So anyway, that was kind of a, you know, a scatter shot um, approach to apologizing and repentance, but I uh, hope, hope it helps and I uh, hope you have a great week and we'll see you probably tomorrow. All right. Cheers.